What kind of advice do you give to the young people that want to get in to this and be the Stan Lee of their generation? Well, if they're artists, they've just got to study art and be able to draw as well as the artists who are doing the books. Because if they can't draw that well, why would they be hired? So they've got to really get good. It's not as easy for a writer as it has been in the past. Because today, so many big writers want to write comics. Because they suspect if they write a really good comic book, it may turn into a movie at some point. And therefore, unless you are an experienced writer, a printed writer, a writer that the editor will say, hey, this is good, I know your stuff, I'd like you to write for us. It's very difficult if you're somebody who hasn't written professionally. You really have to try to get friendly with an editor and get to know him and get him to take a chance with you. It, it, that's not an easy thing to do. So for a writer, it's tougher to get into the business than it was unless you've been published elsewhere and you knock on the door as a professional writer. Where did you get your, your, your knowledge of how important it is to relate to people outside of the United States? I mean, we're, we're seeing now, I mean, even in the last presidential election, we saw Mitt Romney in a position that he could have won, but he, he had a hard time relating and dealing with the browning of America. I mean, where did you get that knowledge? I always had that feeling. Um, when I was a kid, I used to read, when I was 10 years old, 12 years old, there was a series of books called Jerry Todd. It was like the Hardy Boys and books like that. And there were stories about a kid named Jerry Todd and what he and his friends did. But at the end of the book, there were letters to the editor and the writer of the Jerry Todd book would answer the letters. He'd print the letters and his answers. And that had never been done in a hardcover book before. Mm. Those were 50 cent hardcover books. 50 cents was a lot of money then. And I used to read those and I thought, I love that. I, I feel as if I know the writer. He's talking to me. I could write a letter and he'll answer me. And I did and he did. And when I started doing the comics, I started a column called Stan Soapbox, where I wrote messages to the readers, not necessarily about comics, about anything I thought of. And we started getting so much mail from all over the world. And I realized that these comics are enjoyed by people worldwide. And after a while, it wasn't just a job, but it was like a responsibility. Hmm. I felt I had to do this right. And I had to, in, in some small way, if I could make people in other countries think, boy, these Americans aren't bad. These are good stories and they care about us and they pay attention to us. So I've always been conscious of, of the whole world, of people all over and and, now we get so much mail from all over the world that it's, it's wonderful. I relate to everybody the same, whether I'm talking to somebody like you, who's erudite and knowledgeable, or whether I'm talking to some kid who's just stumbled onto comic books and movies. It's the same thing. I wanted to be a race car driver, but I didn't have any money, so I need money to do that. And. Uh, so when I, somebody in New York then told me, we have a job offer for you if you want in Indianapolis. So that was in 1974. And I said, I'm going to Indianapolis. 